So in order to study polynomial functions, we need a few more terminologies before we can move and do more product of transformation of power functions, which is what we will look at polynomial functions as. So x equals a is set to be a zero or a root of a polynomial function if and only if when you substitute x equals a into the function, you end up with zero. In other words, x equals a is the x-intercept of this polynomial function. If you have x equals a to be a zero, then we can also say that x minus a is a factor of p of x, and we can actually factor x minus a as many times as we can, leaving p of x as product of x minus a to power n times g of x, where g of x is the quotient of the division p of x divided by x minus a to power n. And not only that, but if you substitute x equals a into the g function in the quotient, that quotient is not a zero. Because if it were zero, that means x minus a can be factored out of g of x again. But we already pulled out the maximum x minus a to power n factors out as many times as we could. So this also brings us to another vocabulary, which is multiplicity of a zero. We say x equals a is a zero of multiplicity n if x minus a is a factor n times. In other words, we write p of x as x minus a to power n times g of x, where g of a is not zero. Then we say a is a zero of multiplicity n. So anytime you hear the word zero root x-intercept, Think in your head, it's all exactly the same thing. So n is the largest number of times that x equals a is a zero in the polynomial p of x. Multiplicity refers to how many times the factor x minus a appears. x minus a to power n, do you remember what that means? x minus a times x minus a, x minus a, n times. Well, what do those terminologies actually mean? Let's come back to our example x plus 1 times x. You can see x plus 1, so x equals negative 1 is one of the zeros. It's multiplicity 1 because x plus 1 only appears here once. x, that means x minus 0, so x equals 0 is a 0 of multiplicity 1 because it only appears once. Now, when you have power function of degree 1, it's linear. Linear means like a line. So look, if we get closer and closer to the function, close to 0, it looks just like a line. So if I had just shown you this, you wouldn't even know that it's a parabola. But if you go back out, you can see why it's a parabola. Same thing will happen if you zoom in close to negative 1. You will see that it's a line. And so that means that one of the things that we can think of is how the power of each of the factors might contribute how the graph looks like at the actual 0. So let's play and make this power a 2 and see what happens. Look at what just happened. At negative 1, instead of line, you have a parabola shape close to it. Why? Because x plus 1 now has a degree 2. What happens if I put a 10 in front, the coefficient keeps the same shape, but remember what happens? It stretches vertically. So that's what the 10 does. Now, what happens if you change the power of x plus 1 to a squared? Whoa, look at that. Suddenly, instead of linear, it became quadratic or a second degree. So how many times a 0 appears, the multiplicity seems to have an effect on what happens very close to that 0. In this case, at negative 1, you have a parabolic shape. Let's make the x a cubed. Now look what happened. Can you see? Let's go in a little closer so you can see. This is just like an x cubed function. So it's very tempting to understand polynomial functions that the zeros of their multiplicity may contribute to the shape very close to this 0. Here you have a cubic, here you have a square. So that is exactly what we're going to explore more next. So let's change the 10 to a 5. 
keta x plus 1 squared, and instead of x cubed, we have x minus 1 cubed. Now the cubic shape has moved over to x equals 1. And then at x equals negative 1, we still have the parabolic shape. But look at all the terms here in the polynomial, in the expanded form. So this, what you see here, is this multiplied out. So you can see we have negative 5, which is the constant term, which is also the y-intercept, because when x is 0, you will get the constant term negative 5 to be your y-intercept. And the x-intercepts are negative 1 and 1. On top of it, the highest degree term here is 5x to the fifth. If you just plot 5x to the fifth, look what we get. We get that graph. But now, let's zoom out and see what happens. You can see there's hardly any distinction between 5x to the fifth and the original polynomial that you see here. This is the original polynomial, and this is the 5x to the fifth, which means that all these other terms, 5x to the fourth, 10x cubed, 10x squared, 5x5, don't really contribute to the end behavior of the polynomial. It's the highest degree term, x to the fifth, that contributes to the end behavior, which looks like x to the fifth. So left hand will be down and right hand will be up. So again, original shape is this graph here, but left hand is down and right hand is up. This is going to allow us to graph any polynomial function in the factored form. You look at the highest degree term with the leading coefficient, that dictates the end behavior, and everywhere else, once you have the zeros, if it's a quadratic, it will be parabola shape. If it's a degree one, it will be linear shape. Any odd power will be the squiggly that you've been working with. So let's do some more examples and see how to graph polynomial functions. And then we'll come back and do a little more theory. Let's review what we just looked at. x minus 1 cubed and x plus 1 squared. What we saw is that when x is very large positive, or as x goes to negative infinity, there are function, if you open these brackets up, will behave very much like x squared times x to the third, which is x to the fifth. Because you have x to the third from the first quantity and x squared from the second quantity, giving you x to the fifth. Odd power, which means that our graph, left hand corner is going to be down and the right hand corner is going to be up. OK, then we also saw that when it's x minus 1 cubed, so at x equals 1, it's going to be a cubic function. And at x equals negative 1, it's a parabola function because it's squared. So we're going to have at x equals negative 1, parabola shape. And at x equals positive 1, it's going to be cubic shape. Now how do we know that the parabola is going to be down here? One way to check that is you know the left-hand corner is in the bottom. So if it crosses negative 1, because at negative 1 you have 0, the parabola shape is on the bottom. Similarly, for the cubic shape, the right-hand corner is on top. So the graph is going to come from the top towards 1 and then go down. So if you take a look. We connect all of that because polynomial functions do not have any holes or asymptotes, because every single x value will produce a real number. So if we connect that, our shape will look something like that. So we have a rough sketch of our polynomial function. You can always plot points to see where the coordinates are. You can see how when x is negative 2, it's negative 27, negative 1, and 0, 0, and negative 1. That's how you know it turns back and goes back down, and then goes back up towards 1, because those are your zeros. So the multiplicity controls whether the graph touches or whether it crosses through. Even exponent on the factor, the graph is touching the intercept odd exponent, you are crossing the intercept. 
All right, pause the video here and let's see if you can do this problem. See if you can figure out the rough sketch of this polynomial. Go ahead, pause the video and analyze what is happening here. When you're done, we'll check together. You can see it's very similar to the one we did before, except the x minus 1 has the even power now, and the x plus 1 has the odd power. Go ahead, try it on your own. All right, assuming you've come back, look what we got. As x goes to infinity, you're going to have x squared times x to the third, or x to the fifth, just like before. So our left hand is on the bottom, and the right hand is on top. Except now, at x equals 1, you're going to have parabola. And at x equals negative 1, you're going to have the squiggly or the cubic. <clears throat> then, because it's a polynomial function, you're going to connect all of these pieces together. And so you will have this shape. So this is the graph of our function. So in this example that we just did, we had a cubic shape at negative 1 and a parabola shape at 1. And we said that the multiplication of these will give you x to the fifth as our n behavior. And if you want to actually investigate why the x to the fifth term dominates, let's take a look at that next. So we saw graphically that if you zoom out, that the graph mostly looks like x to the fifth. Algebraically, you can see this. When you plug in 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, or on the negative infinity side, negative 1,000, negative 10,000, negative 100,000, you can see both x to the fifth and the actual polynomial multiplied out. They are both going to infinity or negative infinity. So they behave very similarly to each other. And that is why. It is enough to just look at the highest power of the polynomial if you want to figure out the end behavior. So in this case, the end behavior, as x goes to plus or minus infinity, the function behaves very much like x to the fifth. So we saw graphically this is what it meant. If you look very close to the zeros, x to the fifth looks very different than the graph that we were looking at for the polynomial function. But if you zoom out, again, you can see the difference between the two. But if you zoom out far enough, they both look identical to each other. And that's another way to say that the end behavior of the original polynomial is very much like x to the fifth. All right, if we look at the same graph but add a 2, what do you think will happen to the graph? You can plot some points, but here is our original polynomial, the blue graph. And so all this will happen is that you go 2 up. The only thing you do not know is where the x-intercepts are when you do it this way. Let's see if you can do this next example. Pause the video here, see what you can do. Go ahead. Don't get overwhelmed with how the polynomial looks. Looks can be very deceptive. Just take a deep breath, one thing at a time. Just take a look at all the intercepts, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, and behavior, and see if you can put it all together. So our steps are set each factor to 0, get x-intercept, set x to 0, to get y-intercept, look at the highest power if you were to expand it out, and then graph it. So go ahead, pause the video, see what you can do. All right, assuming you've come back, our first step is to take each factor, x minus 4, x plus 4, x minus 2, x plus 2, set them to 0, and our x-intercepts are then x equals 4, negative 4, 2, and negative 2. Next step, set x to 0 to get the y-intercept. And so we'll get 1 over 10 times all of these things, which is 51.2 as our y-intercept. 
Third step is to figure out the end behavior looking at the highest degree term. So we have 1 over 10 times x times x, x to the third, x to the square. Basically, you're ignoring the constants. So x from the first term, x from the second term, x to the third from the third term, and x to the second from the fourth term. And the 1 over 10 is the leading coefficient. So we have 1 over 10 x to the 7, which means our graph is going to behave very much like x to the 7. So that means left hand is going to be down and right hand will be up because it's an odd power function. Let's put it all together then and sketch a rough sketch. So we have when x goes to infinity, the right hand is up. When x goes to negative infinity, left hand is down. And so now to graph it, we have our negative 4, negative 2, 2, and 4, our intercepts. Negative 4 is linear, so it just crosses. Negative 2, you have even power, so it's a parabola shape. x equals 2 is cubic, so it'll be a cubic shape. And x equals 4 is 1 power, so it'll be linear. And so then you will connect all of that to get your final graph. So you can see how we could get a rough sketch of the graph just by looking at the intercepts and the end behavior. Let's see if you can do this one. It's very similar except for the negative here. Go ahead, pause the video, see what you can do. So it's very similar to what we just did except for the negative. So our end behavior is going to be x times x, x squared, times x to the third, times x squared. So it'll be x to the 7 again, but with a negative 1 over 10 as the leading coefficient. Negative x to the 7 power means left hand will be up, right hand will be down. Negative 4 is linear, negative 2 is parabola, 2 is cubic, and 4 is linear. So there's our graph. All right, in this next example, we're giving you the graph, and you figure out if you can find the polynomial whose graph this represents. You can see that it's odd degree total because the left hand is down, right hand is up. Go ahead, pause the video, see if you can come up with the polynomial whose graph this is. Assuming you've come back, let's take a look. We have our x-intercepts, negative 2, so that means factor is x plus 2. x-intercept negative 1, so factor is x plus 1. x equals 1, so x minus 1. And x equals 2, so x minus 2. At negative 2, it's linear, so it's 1 power. At negative 1, it's a parabolic shape, so second degree. At 1, you have... Uh, odd power, so we can say 3, and for x equals 2, it's linear power. Now, we don't know exactly if this 2 or 4 or 6 or 3 or 5 or 7, any odd power would work. In addition, our coefficient is 1 because when x is 0, our y-coordinate is going to be 4, negative 2 times Negative 1 is 2, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. So we can see that the leading coefficient is going to be 1 from looking at the y-intercept. A little more terminology. When the graph rises up and turns back down, these peaks are called local maximums. So here you have 1, here you have a second one. All the peaks on the bottom are called local minimums, like here and here. You need calculus to figure out some of these points that are maximum and minimum, especially if they are not intercepts. The reason we said that the even power x plus 1 squared can be 4 or 6 or any even power, because we don't know where this maximum occurs. You need calculus for that. And so unless you play with figuring out which power exactly will match this exact graph, 
just to get a rough sketch, you can have any even power and any odd power for the x plus 1 and x minus 1 factors. So in summary, the degree of the polynomial is even for the n behavior and the leading coefficient is not 0 and positive, then both ends of the polynomial are going to be up. If the leading coefficient is negative and you have degree polynomial even, then both ends of the polynomial are going to be facing downwards. If the degree of the polynomial is odd and the leading coefficient is positive, left hand is down, right hand end is up, leading coefficient negative, left hand is up, and right hand is down. So to graph polynomial functions that are in the factored form, you first find the x-intercepts by using the zero product property, setting each factor to zero. Find y-intercept by setting x to zero. If it is an even power for the factor, linear factor, you're going to get a parabolic shape either this way or going down. It depends on from which side of it you're approaching. If it's an odd degree for the linear factor, you are going to have a odd power function behavior. And whether it comes from the left up or from the left down depends on which side of it you approach, starting with the end behavior. And just like we just reviewed a little before, even degree odd degree determines that. Even degree leading coefficient positive up up, leading coefficient negative down down, odd degree and positive leading coefficients left hand down, right hand up, odd degree and negative exponent left hand is up and right hand is down. So this concludes how to graph polynomial functions that are written as product of linear factors. And some of the linear factors could be to different exponents, odd or even exponents.